Hello and welcome. Hello, my name is Sudhanwa Deshpande. I am from Jannatimanch and from Leftward Books. And it's a great, it's it's with a great deal of pleasure that I welcome all of you for this solidarity meeting with the Freedom Theater of the Jenin Refugee Camp in Palestine. On the face of it, the Freedom Theater is only a tiny theater in a small town, in a small corner of, um, of a, actually a small land. But the Freedom Theater is much more than that. It is one of the most vital theater and cultural organizations in the world today. And the Freedom Theater has been under attack over the years, several, several times. One of its founders, Giuliano Merchamis, was assassinated right outside the outside the theater. Many others have been imprisoned. The theater itself has also been physically attacked more than once. One reason for this is its location in the Jenin refugee camp, which itself has been a strong center of Palestinian resistance over the decades. The other reason is intrinsic to what the Freedom Theater does. It turns the spotlight on the occupation, on the brutal, colonialist, apathite, racist occupation of Palestine by Israel. So the Freedom Theater, through its productions in film, in theater, and through other means, turns the spotlight on the occupation, of course, but also on the internal contradictions of Palestinian society. In other words, it acts as the conscience of not just the Palestinian people, but of the world. On behalf of the Freedom Theater, Jenna Timanj, and Leftward Books, I welcome you to today's solidarity meeting. Before I introduce the speakers and ask them to speak, I have a few announcements to make. One is those of you who feel comfortable and those of you who can, please do turn on your videos. The reason I'm saying this is because this is a solidarity meeting and it would be nice for our friends from the Freedom Theater to be able to see us, that we stand here not just as screens with names on it, but as human beings, and theater is all about making the human to human connection. For us in India, the Freedom Theater holds a special place because through the play that Janati Manch had done with the Freedom Theater in 2015, 2016, called Hamesha Samita, which translates uh, as Forever Steadfast, we toured 11 cities in India. Subsequently, Janati Manch also toured in parts of the West Bank in, um, in the April of, of, of 2016. So, so, for, so for many of us, uh, the Freedom Theater is not just an abstract entity, it's actual live human beings as well. Um, and so therefore it's really, really important for us to make this human to human connection. So those of you who can, do please turn on your videos. It would be really nice for our friends from Palestine to see our faces. Uh, the second thing is that right at the end of the meeting, we hopefully will have about five to 10 minutes for uh, a very quick uh, Q&A. We've not kept it very long, but uh, you know, deliberately, because we want to give maximum time to our Palestinian friends to share what they have to share with us. Mm, so, uh, so hopefully there will be a Q&A. And I would request uh, those of you who would like to ask questions, to keep your questions as brief as possible so that we can get as many questions in as possible um, and, you know, and give time to our Palestinian friends and comrades to answer your questions. Um, uh, and uh, also just to say that if you're not able to change your name or, uh, or your image, don't worry about it. Uh, uh, this is a security feature that you know we need to we need to make sure that there are no trolls here um, who are up to mischief because that's something that the freedom theater and also many of us uh, have faced in the past so without any further ado uh, we'll start this evening with a testimony from palestine uh, to be read by sania hashmi sania is um, is an organizer in jannatimaj 
She is currently secretary of the Natimaj. So over to you, Sanya. Thanks, Subhanda. Testimony from Rania al -Basfi, HR, Admin and Logistics at the Freedom Theater. I'm Rania al Wasfi from Janine Refugee Camp, a mother of three children living in the Jabriyat area overlooking Janine Camp. Early Monday morning at one, large Israeli forces from the Occupation Army entered the outskirts of Janine Camp. Their largest concentration was next to my house. There was killing, shelling, demolition, burning of houses and cars, raising of roads, loss of friends, family, and loved ones. I called my mother crying and asking her to leave with my family from the camp because I was afraid that she will die. She refused and my brothers refused to go out. They would prefer to die in their homes than be displaced again, not to surrender. I realized that I was losing them. I cried so hard that the tears dried up. My heart stopped in fear. The shelling began, the clashes began, the invasion began. And I watched out the window as the troops in armored personnel carriers entered the camp. The number was innumerable. If these forces and equipment entered a country, I would expect they would occupy it. Such very, very large forces just to invade a camp, a kilometer squared. I could have died from fear for my family. My camp, I adore my camp. I was born and lived my best days in this camp. At 10 a.m., my family's house was bombed by the occupation planes. Pieces of the missile hit my brother and uncle and they were taken to the hospital but they're okay. At four o'clock in the afternoon, soldiers entered my family's house, detained them in a room, confiscated their mobile phones and cut off communication with them. Since then, we did not hear any news from my sick mother, my sister or my brother's wife and her young children. In the evening, the army asked the camp residents to leave the houses because they wanted to bomb the houses there. The planes left, but all the people were not allowed. The rest of the army has been in the house for two days and they refused to let my family out. They investigated my mother about the camp, the resistance, the camp's people and the neighbors. They had a large police dog with them and they put him next to my brother's children. They are now suffering from a nervous breakdown. My little nephew is just three years old. For years, he has been suffering from trauma. Now he's experiencing a severe nervous breakdown due to the bombing of the house and the army siege. After the army withdrew from the house, the Palestinian Red Crescent came and brought my mother to the hospital with the family. She received some treatment and they're fine now, thank God. If they demolished the house, bombed every neighborhood, and burned everything in the camp, we will not leave the camp here. We will remain like the olive trees. Thank you. Thank you, Sanya. Um, Uh, I would now like to invite uh, Mustafa Sheta, uh, who is a producer uh, at the Freedom Theatre, um, a very dear friend. I first met Mustafa several years ago, uh, completely by chance in Berlin, if he remembers this. Um, and subsequently, we have met um, in Janine in Palestine as well. Uh, this recent raid that happened, uh, that lasted for almost three days, was one of the most uh, severe and one of the most brutal raids uh, by the Israeli uh, occupation forces. Um, it, it reminded a lot of people of uh, the year 2002 when the famous Battle of Jenin took place. Um, Mustafa Sheta was there uh, in the Jenin refugee camp at the theater. 
and we would like to hear from you mustafa about what that meant over to you uh, thank you sodhanva and our friends in india in fact it's really great opportunity to share with you the real story happened here in jinn fuji camp where is the a political space, a political area, include the political lead people. They have their uh, political identity as refugees. They are live here after 75 years under the occupation, after the Israel, this uh, colonialism state established in our country to understanding everything, our resources and everything related with the life here in <laughs> our... our <laughs> Uh, in fact, we face this condition that happened with us for different scenarios. In fact, we, we face the same scenarios by different way. But when we put the in, uh, or we look for that by intensive uh, uh, way, we can talk about comparative between what's happened in 2002 and what's happened in 2023. In 2002, big invasion happened here with the big Israel army, with the, uh, they occupied everything, they occupied the land, they occupied the sky. And in, uh, in 2023, they came again to attack everything related to the life. With, with the, with, they occupied uh, uh, one kilometer with, for the more than uh, 18,000 refugees. They are living in the a small camp in, in the north of West Bank. They, it, they came to punishment, uh, punish all the people that already believe and support the resistance, believe the revolution for, for freedom, for liberation. They attacked us in, from Monday. Monday for the story the trees attack the act of freedom theater time. About then we talk about the 12 persons, young people, they are killed by Israel army, by their aggressive and by their hatest feeling, came to us to attack everything related to life, as what I said. Mm. It looks like Mustafa's internet uh, has been causing problems, so it seems to me like he's dropped out. Um, he's back. Ah, okay, cool. Sorry. Hello, are you with me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Sorry, sorry for that uh, cut in the internet. So that what, as what I said, they attacked everything related with the life. They, it, they, they targeted uh, the electricity, the water, the, the infrastructure, the, the, the streets, the roads, everything here. And they arrested more than 100 persons in that, in, in that small and intensive invasion. As well, I said it's like a letter for the people here to say, don't stand with the revolution. Don't stand with your rights. They push us to, to leave our rights, in fact, by this aggressive action here happened in Jenin refugee camp. They continue with their aggressive action against the Palestinian with a big support from US, from the global, uh, our big countries in the world. And that's needed from all the people all the free people, all the free world to support the Palestinian, to get their rights, to get their liberation and to establish what they dream and what they hope in, the, in, the, in, their, in their life. As independent, as free people, they need to have a free space to talk and to share and to make exchange with the different people out of the world. We are like any, any person in the world. We are a human like any person in the world. They need to have like a normal life and live and continue. 
And this attack, it's not just attack the buildings or the people to kill the people, it's attacked us from our inside. Now our, our children, they are really scared. They are fair from anything. They are fair from they have anything related with the bombs or uh, with the guns or something like that. We talk about a new generation. They are will grow up with the fear, with the with the scared from the future, from their life, from the situation now. And this 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 a new generation when they grow up and hear about what's happened with their with their yards, with their families, with their mothers, with their fathers. What you expect they can do, what they expect you they can, how they can continue their life by normal way. All of us, we think sometimes we we need to be uh, to to meet the doctors because all of us we are really need a, a medicine because uh, we need something to help us just to continue by good way and by by normal way. We need we are like really we are not super men or, or super women. We are not super human. We are like a human, but it's really this attack. It's really give put us in the reality how how we can continue and accept this condition this occupation to continue and to attack and to try to attack to attack our dignity that must to stop that must to stop from long time but that must to stop now before tomorrow and uh, as what i said this attack it's not just about numbers about the Cars destroyed and the, the uh, cars. It's, it's uh, the Israel make a fire. The energy, this new and modern weapons that they they they, tar they tar uh, target us by it by this new weapons and new, new style of uh, attack. It's talk about how that's make a big impact of the human being itself here in Palestine. So yes, uh, uh, for the Freedom Theater. In fact, they attacked one of the places is under attack was the Freedom Theater. This is a place where the people they came they came to to it to just to expression, to feel they can talk by freeway to 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 to, to feel they, it's really a safe space for them, just to 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 present their their talent they they present their shows they talk about their stories. It's under it was under attack by their sound bombs. And that the rockets and the energy and the snipers they, they occupied the building of the Freedom Theater. They tried to do, to to make some big impact on the old building already we have here in the theater. This we have theater. It's really old. It's built during the British mandate. We are like you. We was we were under the British occupation too. They built the store for their army and we use it later to be like a place for freedom and for liberation. This, it was under attack by Israel when they targeted the, the roof of the Freedom Theater by their song, sound uh, bombs. They target our camera because they think it's important to hit any reality. They destroy it in the front of the Freedom Theater because they don't need to, to leave any evidence or any stamp for their ugly action happened here. So that's what we have here. That's what we have. In fact, by we can regular. It's not just about what's happened just in July. That's happened too in June and in May, in April, in March, in February, in January. That's not happened just in one time. That's happened all the time. All the time we have like big event or like big invasion here. And we have we just collect the number of the people that are killed. And we just to check who we know from those people and the relationship between us and those people. But sometimes, because we are really live here in this small area, sometimes you feel all of the people, they are like your brothers or your relatives. So what you can do, how you can protect the people, how you can help them from, as a theater, it's really it's really hard and difficult mission. But in the same time, what we said and what we raised, we talk all the time about our rule as important to, to just to protect the people, to talk with the people about their identity, to talk about the, the rights and about this kind of, of attacks come. And we talk about this relationship or this un, unbalance, unbalanced power deal with us from, from US, from Europe, from different countries. They can stop that and they must stop that. And we believe for the free people and for the gasus. Uh, organizations from the people already believe in Palestine right to support us. We have real and clear rights and we need from all the people to support us. 
We use all the time the comparative between the situation in Palestine and the situation sometime with India or with South, or South Africa about what exactly they faced before. We try to learn from the lesson from the people outside in, in, the, in the, the conditions and the occupations and the resistance come from different uh, uh, friends around the world. And we know how we can continue to get liberation. And uh, we will continue in the Freedom Theater to raise the title of cultural resistance. And we will continue for, for fight and uh, to continue for a uh, continue in our struggle to get liberation in the end. And thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mustafa. Uh, that was a very impassioned uh, uh, intervention that you made. Thank you very much for, uh, for giving us a sense of what it means to be uh, in a tiny place that is the, uh, the Jenin refugee camp and, and the Freedom Theatre itself, actually, for those of you uh, who have not been there, it's at one of the entrances of the refugee camp. You don't have to go um, uh, too deep into it. And so therefore, any, uh, any Israeli uh, you know, military or, or, or police vehicle that comes in uh, has to necessarily almost pass uh, next to the Freedom Theatre. And, and that's also a reason why the Freedom Theatre has been very much um, um, in their targets. Uh, Mustafa, uh, has Tobasi joined? Is he, uh, is he with you? Is he because I don't see his name in the. Uh... His name is Ahmad Jamil here. Ah, uh, okay. I... All right, all right. Okay, I... thank you. Wait, I will ask him to join. Thank you. I did see Ahmad Jamil somewhere. Uh, so Tobasi, uh, if you can turn on your video, please. Um, Ahmed Tobasi uh, is an actor, director, uh, and currently the artistic director of the Freedom Theatre. He's a superb performer. Um, I have seen him perform, and uh, he's just in, he, he really is a force of nature um, and a wonderful, wonderful human being. Uh, so, can I ask Tobasi to please unmute himself and uh, and to show us? His lovely there he is. Habibi. Hello, Sudanva. All right. Over to you, Tubasi. Tell us what's been happening. And in particular, what we are really interested in knowing from you is how the Freedom Theater has responded to this uh, latest attack. Of course, as um, as Mustafa said, it's not the first attack. There have been a series of attacks on the Jenin refugee camp and uh, on the Freedom Theater. But what are your plans for the future and how are you responding to what you have undergone recently? Yes, Yanni, I'm sure Mustafa said a lot about uh, feelings, uh, invasion, the uh, army, but also it's, a, it's a good to mention that when the Israeli army comes to invade one of our villages or towns or cities or West Bank, they are not come just to destroy a building or to destroy the stones or to destroy the streets. These things are easy to rebuild. I remember one time my friend that he already died, uh, they interrogate him in the Israeli intelligence, especially the, after uh, 2002. And the intelligence captain, the Israeli captain asking my friend, are you sad because we destroyed the, your houses? Uh, my friend said, no, 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 we are not sad. The houses, we will build it again. But the Israeli intelligence captain, he told him, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about the stones. I'm not talking about uh, the cement. I'm talking about the memories that you have in that house, that your life, your family, your memories, your past, it's gone. So exactly, when they attack, when they come with bulldozers, with uh, tanks, with vehicles, with drones, they come to tell us as, as people, don't dream, you are not free, you are under incubation. They put you in this bubble that you feel that whatever I do, I, I'm still Palestinian and I'm still under incubation. They want to control and damage your mind. 
your hope, your feelings, your emotion. They are not just coming to destroy the house. So for me, especially after this invasion, it was so clear that everybody was tired mentally, emotionally, psychologically. It's the first time I meet the people in the camp, adults, uh, fathers, sisters, uh, and mothers, and it's the first time they are talking clearly about mental health and psychologically uh, issues that the children, the old people are uh, living now. Especially now, it's really become so uh, mad that if any fake news about next invasion, you see some people leaving their houses, they're leaving the camp because emotionally, it's too big pressure and effect to be inside your house, feeling stuck. You hear all these phones, you hear all these rockets, you hear all this shouting, you hear all this destruction, and you don't know what's going to happen with you. And you can go through all these scenarios you're creating in your mind to see what's going to happen while you still standing in your place. So we talk here about a big psychologically, mentally effect about 20,000 people. At least we talk about one kilometer square Jili camp where they live in from 20 years at least and invasions, attacks every day from 20 years. And after this 20 years, I don't know what Palestine, Palestinians, the world, the West, American, Israeli is expect from these people in the camp or from this community. What the reaction they are expecting? 20 years, there is children growing up, there is adults growing up, there is people building their futures on the same reality. Invasions, attacks, Israeli soldiers, snipers, drones. What is expecting from us? I'm wondering how Palestinians still can go on with that. For me, that's not normal. For sure, that's normal. And that means we have a serious issue. Now we are not talking about freeing Palestine. Now we are not talking about a, a, a human equality. We talk about people are living 75 years under a big psychologically mental health problems and emotional destructions. All that uh, uh, for me is not normal and we need to now stop and stand and think about how we gonna empower our kids, how we can empower our women, our doctors, uh, what they're going through. There is no place in this earth uh, uh, like this place. The people living every day, second invasion attacks, occupation. So the Freedom Theater was so clear. With all these challenges, we will, we have to continue our work. We have to secure uh, a space, safe a space, uh, uh, activity, uh, uh, workshops, an emergency uh, uh, artistic uh, uh, program that can make the children uh, 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 able to go at least a little bit join this uh, activity and have some fun and leave the reality behind them. I'm telling you, uh, uh, many, uh, the good thing, it's many artists uh, uh, in Palestine, free uh, organization, all of them uh, were in contact to do activities uh, uh, in Jini camp for the children in the schools. And I was so happy to see all artists from different fields all gather in the Freedom Theater and they go inside the camp uh, with a big protest, protest and demonstration, artistically celebrating the children, the women, and it was very clear all people joined to celebrate with us, which means clearly our responsibility become bigger. Our responsibility have to bring and offer with all this situation that we live in to bring more colors to the camp, to, to bring back some colors to the people. So, but at the same time, we are not, uh, we, are, we don't have the magic stick. We are a very little uh, team now after the effect of conditional fund of AU, after the uh, conditional uh, uh, funds all over uh, 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 the founders, which make our work difficult and really need, yani need, uh, um, need a believers to continue with this kind of work. At the same time, we're still asking 
working for individual freedom individual also challenging our community to be more free to and we're not leaving the basic legacy of our individual freedom women rights children rights a, a, a freedom is a freedom so even in this times we try to show people what means to be oppressed what means to be under control what means that people suffering to find their freedom even in and within Palestinian community. So we, we, we try to use it in this way and push more and challenge more. And I promise you, I got more energy after the invasion. And I'm challenging now more people, more our community, more our uh, 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 neighbors, because now it's not about exist or not. Freedom theater is exist. Now we want more achievements. We are here. We want more achievements. What happens in the invasion and how the news deals about the freedom theater show us how big responsibility we have uh, as a freedom theater to continue our work. As there is invasions, as there is martyrs, tanks, rockets, also there is the freedom theater in Jenin who also going to tell the Israelis, the occupation, the world. We also as a Palestinian, we are artists and we have theaters. We have dreams and we're going to do art. And for us as a freedom theater, we will resist through theater and art. And if you kill us because we're doing theater, then I cannot say anymore. But that's what we try to improve. And uh, now uh, also uh, we try. Sorry. So yes, uh, we try. We try now to focus on our uh, really program to see how we can really match it. Uh, uh, not just to show the world that we're doing work about the invasion, but it's how to to make it naturally attached to the daily life uh, in Jenin camp with the work of the Freedom Theater. Now we're taking, we have a big responsibility. We have been showing whatever is going on in Jenin is through the Freedom Theater. The Freedom Theater become much more than a theater. It's an organization, it's a place doing everything, serving the cultural resistance in different ways. Uh, and for us, that's what makes us continue when I see even some friends in India are interested and following and supporting us and stand in solidarity with us. That's the energy we need <laughs> because everything around you here as a freedom theater, they want you to close. They don't want this light shine from the refugee camp, from the freedom theater to say there is a place also providing and fighting for children, for women, for rights, and it's trying to offer a place that is different from everything around. So for us, yes, we need money for sure, but without solidarity, without this kind of feeling, without the, this kind of friends, supporters, be showing us that we don't, we cannot continue in this easy way. So thank you very much, Sodhanfa, and all the friends in India. As there is collaboration with the Indian government, there is also Indian people who are also artists, activists, and they know what is going on in this in this time, and they're supporting Palestine and the right of Palestinians to exist. So for me, thank you for this event that show us uh, uh, all this care, and for us, that's what we need to continue the work, difficult work in the Freedom Theater. Thank you so much. Uh, that was really uh, inspiring to hear you speak, Tobasi. Um, I just want to say that as far as we in India are concerned, we have a very long history of, uh, of support for the Palestinian cause, for Palestinian freedom. This is something that goes from, uh, from the time of Mahatma Gandhi, in fact, from before independence, from the 1930s. Uh, the, the, the independent movement in India, Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru and others stood in support of Palestinian freedom. Um, I also want to quickly make a point to, uh, to the people in India who, who joined this, uh, um, this meeting, that it's really important for us to, 
to recognize uh, and to be aware of the fact that Indian taxpayers' money is also financing the occupation of Palestine. Uh, it might come as a surprise to some of us uh, to know that India is the biggest buyer of Israeli arms uh, anywhere in the world, including inside Israel. In other words, Israel itself does not buy as many Israeli arms as India does. And so it's really important for us to press upon our governments, our representatives, to take strong pro Palestinian stance. At the moment, because of the right-wing government that we have in India. And in Israel, we have the most right-wing government uh, in its history um, at the moment, which is saying something because in Israel, you've had a series of right-wing governments, uh, but currently the government is probably the most right-wing government ever. Uh, but there's a kind of a natural affinity between Netanyahu and, uh, and Narendra Modi there's a natural affinity between the ideas of Zionism and the ideas of Hindutva. In fact, Hindutva has, has borrowed a lot of ideas um, and, and has kind of studied the Israeli playbook uh, uh, quite carefully. Recently, we have, we've seen how the, how the bulldozer, for instance, has been weaponized in India against the Muslims. Now, this is something that is directly from Israel. This is what Israel has done consistently for many decades against Palestinians. So it's really important for us to, uh, uh, to be aware of this and to put pressure wherever we can, however we, uh, we can, on our elected representatives to stand up uh, in support of Palestinian rights. That's one thing. But the other thing also is that Israel doesn't only sell uh, you know, uh, uh, military equipment uh, to India. Israel also sells software to India. Israel also... Uh, uh, is a country where uh, Indian doctors, for instance, are sent for training in sort of counter inter insurgency, uh, you know, situations and so on and so forth. There's a whole lot of government to government, uh, uh, you know, connection that's happening between uh, Israel and India. And in particular, in order for arms to be sold, in order for this kind of uh, a relationship to become a, a much closer relationship, it's very important for Israel and India to also establish a cultural relationship. And so therefore, all of us in the room today uh, are cultural uh, you know, artists, activists, uh, uh, thinkers, writers, and so on. And I would, I would appeal to all of us to be aware of the fact that in India, we have the Indian uh, campaign for the cultural and artistic um, uh, boycott. Uh, of Israel, which is called INCAG-B. Uh, INCAG-B is part of a much larger global movement called BDS, which is Boycott Divestment Sanctions. Uh, the BDS movement, the Boycott Divestment Sanctions movement is something that has the support of literally all Palestinian civil society groups um, and political formations. So it has the entirety of the Palestinian people behind this campaign and this campaign has appealed to people all over the world to uh, uh, to boycott companies that do uh, uh, that that do business with israel to boycott artists um, who do business with israel but also ask artists and others to boycott israel and israeli institutions uh, and so on and so forth. So that's one. Going from there into divestment and then eventually, hopefully, for governments also to sanction Israel as they did in the case of South Africa. So this is a campaign. I'm not going into the details of this campaign, but the details of uh, uh, are easy to find out on Google. Just go and, uh, and search for BDS, Boycott Divestment Sanctions, and also find out about INCACP. INCACBI, which is the Indian campaign for the cultural and academic boycott of Israel. Um, if at any time you or any of the people that you know uh, get invitations from Israel to come and perform there or from Israeli artists uh, or any kind of Israeli connection, feel free to reach out to people in INCACB or to reach out to some of us. We would help you 
to uh, we would help you to understand the issues involved and and to evolve a response to it i also want to lastly underline the fact that this is not a boycott of all israeli people so therefore individual israeli artists or intellectuals are not under boycott but in but but artists or intellectuals who who come to us with the support of israeli state institutions they are the ones that we uh, that we don't have to uh, have any truck with this is the exact uh, um, it's an expanded uh, version um, of the campaign that eventually worked uh, in south africa uh, as you know south africa for many many years uh, was an apartheid state and uh, it, it was boycotted and sanctioned um by people and governments um across the world and that is what really in the end brought uh, the apartheid regime the uh, apartheid regime of south africa down um i would now call upon molishri hashmi mala to read uh, another testimony uh, from palestine over to you mala thank you poet writer and photographer Darin Tatur's testimony. Resist my people, resist them. I was always aware of what I wanted to be, and that was to be a writer. I remember my extreme obsession with knowing the meanings of words until one of the teachers told me, go and buy a dictionary. I asked my grandmother to buy me a dictionary and presented it to the teacher as if it was a novel as i got older i started turning everything i learned from my grandmother about our history into political poetry in 2015 i witnessed the killing of dozens of palestinian youth who were murdered in cold blood i watched how they killed a woman at the checkpoint because she refused to take off her hijab the kidnapping and murder of a 16 year old boy by israeli settlers the fire bombing of a home that severely burnt a baby and killed his parents i was feeling suffocated unable to express the ugliness of these crimes i felt guilty as a human being and it was breaking my soul how are these children killed in front of our eyes while we are just watching it is a stain on our forehead so i wrote a poem calling for my people to resist this crazy violence it was the cry of pain i was feeling i posted the poem on facebook it was 3 in the morning and i was asleep suddenly i heard my family screaming darin the israelis are coming to arrest you there were more than 40 soldiers in my home and five armored vehicles closing the entrances they transferred me between several prisons for interrogation my family did not know where i was i was washing and wearing the same wet clothes i was arrested in and then they searched my facebook account and after about 21 days they presented my poem resist my people resist them through the poem they accused me of planning to carry out a suicide operation and that i support terrorist entities i spent 5 months in prison then they sent me to a house arrest but notice the contradiction they claimed that i intended to kill israelis and carry out terrorist operations and at the same time they put me in a house in an israeli settlement all they wanted from the beginning was me for me to break and apologize and this is what i did not give them apologize for what after 2 years 6 months and 18 days i was released from house arrest since then the settlers tried to kill me three times i received many threatening and racist messages I felt constantly in danger. I couldn't work, study or publish my books. If I published or performed my poems, I would return to prison. I tried to open new doors, but I couldn't. Finally, I left for Sweden 
on a grant for two years for artists under threat. Here I continued my fight through cultural resistance. Resist my people, resist them. Thank you, Mala. Uh, we are also uh, very pleased and lucky to have with us Zoe Lafati. Uh, Zoe has been associated with the Freedom Theater for many, many years. Uh, she uh, has worked there, she's co-directed plays, she's directed plays for them and so on. Uh, some of us in Janati Manch were lucky to have seen a play called The Siege, uh, which she um, had co-directed. Uh, it was an extremely powerful uh, depiction of, um, of the siege of uh, the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem uh, in the Second Intifada. Uh, I'll not go into the details of that. I just want to say that those of you who are interested in knowing more about the Freedom Theatre, do visit the website of Leftward, which is leftward.com, www.leftward.com. We have two books on the Freedom Theatre that have been uh, created uh, and published in association. Um, with the Freedom Theatre. So just go there and search for the Freedom Theatre. You'll find both those books. Uh, Zoe joins us from, um, uh, from London. Uh, and uh, over to you, Zoe. Hi, great to be here. I'm joining you from the north, north, north west of Scotland. Um, and there's not great internet, so hopefully um, I'll manage to stay with you. Um, before uh, Savannah's um, very kind introduction, um, we heard a testimony, and that testimony was of uh, Doreen Tato, who is an independent poet and was imprisoned for writing um, the poem, Resist My People, Resist Them. This testimony that we heard read is part of a project called The Revolution's Promise, which is created by the Freedom Theatre and uh, artists on the front line. And it focuses on censorship and attacks on Palestinian artists. And I'm just going to talk about that a little bit today and um, try and uh, encourage you all to get involved. Um, so the Freedom Theatre and cultural organisations across Palestine have been incredibly successful in shifting the narrative of what's happening on the ground in Palestine um, and also around Palestinian culture and history. Um, I can say as someone who is British that we often don't really hear um, the truth of what's happening or learn about um, that history correctly. And, and it has been artists and uh, film and theatre and all of these entities which have really helped um, shift things and, and educate people internationally. Um, as Janine Camp was invaded this July, the Freedom Theatre and its team, I think, did a uh, a, a triumphant job against um, so many um, obstacles and also as they were having to quite literally um, survive um, against that invasion. Um, but they, they managed to continue to get the narrative of what was happening in Janine camp out to the international community and combat um, a lot of the misinformation that is often widely reported um, in mainstream media. But um, as with every successful form of resistance, um, there is backlash. Um, and um, obviously that's been touched upon today. Uh, Palestine has a long history of having um, artists killed, imprisoned, cultural buildings destroyed. Um, and uh, I think it's worth noting that this can actually be traced back as far as um, the British mandate um, who um, murdered um, poet uh, Noor Ibrahim. Um, so um, as, as mentioned today, the Freedom Theatre has also had a lot of repercussions for the, the, the work. Uh, Giuliano Mercamis, um, the co-founder and artistic director was murdered in April, 2011. There have been numerous um, attacks um, and destruction to the building, including in this recent invasion, um, there has been the arrest and imprisonment of many staff members, including uh, Mustafa Shetta, who you heard from earlier, who I'm not sure if he was out by the time um, uh, the team um, um, in India had arrived in Palestine, but I certainly um, know he was arrested just, just before that, um, if I'm getting my dates and years right. Um, 
in the last couple of years, um, again, as mentioned, the Freedom Theatre has eight, lost 80% of its core funding um, due to refusing political stipulations that that funding would come with that would make the work impossible. Um, and um, uh, currently, um, Bilal al Sadi, who's the chair of the Freedom Theatres Board, um, has been um, imprisoned for nearly a year um, and that is under this sort of administrative detention where you don't actually have to really give a reason to why someone is arrested, which is the, the term that many artists, um, this administrative detention, it's the term that many artists end up being held for a, a prolonged amount of time. Um, so they never even um, have the right to um, defend the charges because they don't even know what they are. Um, so... Um, we created this project called The Revolution's Promise about the legacy of persecution at the Freedom Theatre. It's not the whole history because it's so, so long and epic, um, but it, it's at least about, um, about part of that. And it also has testimonies of artists across Palestine who have been um, under attack, including um, a filmmaker who spent 20 years in and out of court being sued, a photographer who was shot in the head but survived, um, venues that have been ransacked and had all their equipment and documents destroyed, um, a theatre in Gaza um, that was specifically targeted and bombed, um, and it was a six-storey building, and it's literally a, like a crater in the um, ground now. Um, so the revolution's promise um, collated all of these uh, testimonies, but rather than the Freedom Theatre, um, you know, taking that on tour around the world, um, what we decided to do was create um, a global solidarity project, um, which invites people um, worldwide to um, read these stories and share these stories Um and it's not just about um, censorship, it's also celebrating all of the incredible and innovative ways that artists in Palestine are, are using culture to um, resist and as a form of cultural uh, resistance. Um, it also, uh, we, you know, we've heard a bit about the BDS movement and the cultural boycott. Um, and obviously, um, there's many, many different uh, diversity of tactics that are being uh, used in Palestine. So it also touches upon those and, and looks at how artists and culture intersects with uh, a broad range of um, tactics. Um, so practically, there's like a one hour script, there's a 30 minute script, there's a 45 minute script, there's individual monologues like you just heard. Um, there's a version that is, um, you know, reading a bit and then having discussions. Um, so we've basically tried to create as many different versions that might uh, work for you, whether it's at your union or in your theatre or with your students, um, so that you can introduce what, what's going on and create your own either big events or, you know, just little moments um, to pass these stories on. And we've also got tons of resources to help you uh, feel confident and informed, reading lists, film lists, like everything. Um, so it's really like a, a model um, of a solidarity that we're inviting you to get involved with. Um, and I think it's really interesting um, what was being touched upon today, um, you know, how all of the, you know, both sometimes within histories of colonialism, but also weapons and stuff, there's lots of interconnections. And I think one thing we found doing this project um, or other people taking on this project is that connectivity in struggles and in tactics. And, and that's been that's been very, very um, powerful and interesting, whether that's in Catalonia or Chile or um, various different places. Um, so it's not just necessarily always about giving information from Palestine, but finding those connection points. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that this hasn't happened in any form yet in India, so we really invite you to get involved. Um, I think that it's worth saying that the Israeli army will be returning again to the uh, Freedom Theatre. Um, as I mentioned, the chair of the board is in prison. Um, um, Mohammed Abu Zakr, who's part of the Palestinian Circus School, um, and his testimony is part of this script. He was arrested in 2015, uh, released after two years. He's just been rearrested, 
um, and given a six month sentence. So this is this is very um, much um, there is very much a need for people to get involved and be spreading these stories because um, artists in Palestine are absolutely doing an incredible job. But it, it needs people internationally um, to to join in that sharing of stories. And hopefully this is one model and one way that we can provide you with testimony and information that you can then go on and use in your communities. Um, so, yeah, I, I have a link, um, but I can't share anything in the chat. So I don't know what to do about that. But maybe we can pass it by email to everyone afterwards. Yes, I was going to say that since we have everyone's email IDs, uh, maybe you can send out the links uh, by email to everyone. So, so all the people on uh, in the room, please be aware that in the next day or so, you'll get an email. Uh, please be sure to also check your spam uh, spam folders. Uh, we have a little bit of time for a quick Q and A. Uh, so, those of you uh, who have questions, please uh, raise your hand and I'll call upon you. But before uh, that, I just had a quick question uh, to ask, which is that we mentioned one of the co-founders of the Freedom Theater, Giuliano Mercamis, who was assassinated, but, the, but another of the founders uh, of the Freedom Theater, Zakaria Zubedi, um, who's also had a very checkered, uh, adventurous, interesting life. I just wanted to get an update on where he is at the moment he was uh, he was involved in one of the most famous jail breaks uh, of recent times but then he was caught and arrested again so i just wanted to get an update on uh, on him so do you know uh, what's his situation yeah, I think um, Mustafa, I actually um, sent Mustafa some questions today because we're gonna about to write a statement on Zachariah. So um, I think Mustafa is probably the best person to give the, the most recent right. update as he's just started a hunger strike. Uh, thank you, Zoe. Uh, yes, Zakaria now he's uh, in the Israel jail. He's separated, he's not with another uh, prisoners. They put him alone in the small, uh, a small uh, prison, a small uh, box inside their jails, inside their uh, prisoner, uh, a prison. And uh, recently, in fact, he uh, want to go to the, he want to, uh, or he started with the hunger strike to support another female uh, uh, prisoners because the punishment of the prisoner inside the Israel jail and uh, Julian uh, and uh, sorry, Zakaria, he's like a really important leader inside the uh, inside the jail uh, for the Palestinian national movement. Uh, but he's now he's now uh, I mean he's all the time he faced the different uh, punishment by Israel army because uh, he like you know he's like a, a holy and he's like some boys uh, and the important person for the people in Geneva refugee camp and the people they are really follow. Uh, his uh, his way of of resistance and uh, because Zakaria, in fact, he focused for something really important about about the cultural resistance and about the revolution at all. I mean, how we can really look for the arts as a part of revolution. And uh, Zakaria, from the first day of Zakaria, uh, uh, when he grew up with his uh, with his mother uh, Samira Zubaydi, the, per the first person uh, host. Uh, Arna, uh, Arna uh, Hamis, when she decided to establish the first theater in Jinin Refugee Camp, the Stone Theater, he know what the cultural meal and uh, cultural mean and how they can invest in culture to, uh, to, to for the Palestinian identity in general. So, but Zakaria now in uh, sometime he's really when we know about him because not all the time we have this access to know information about him. But recently, just yesterday. We heard about uh, his uh, hunger strike from four, four, day, four days before uh, to support another people inside the Israel jail. And that's really important in this time. All right. Thank you very much, Mustafa. I saw one hand go up. I don't know the gentleman's name. Samsung SM whatever phone. Um, if, sir, you want to ask a question, but please be brief. Yes, sir. Uh, 
do you want to ask a question? Samsung SM E135F. Okay, he seems to be frozen. I can't make out. Uh, is there anyone else who uh, would like to ask a question or would like to say something? Um, yes, Manu. Yeah. Um, good evening, Marhaba Mustafa Ahmad, and it's lovely to see both of you after a long time. My question was more towards the Palestinian Authority. And soon after the invasion was over, they have come in. Um, how do people in Jenin? Um, react to that. They arrested about four people, young Shabbat. And what is the re reaction to that in Janine? I don't know who wants to answer this. In fact, uh... Look, the relationship between the Palestinian Authority and the people here is not like what you expect. It's not good, in fact. The Palestinian Authority already, they had like a deep agreement with the Israel uh, and the focus for the security coordination between the Palestinian Authority and Israel. And during the invasion, especially the last invasion, uh, the Palestinian Authority, they can't protect the people or they don't already involve to uh, protect the people. So there is a lot of, uh, we can say like uh, angry, uh, angry voices from the camp, from the people in the whole West Bank, in fact. They asked the Palestinian Authority why they don't support us during the invasion. At what time you can use your army or your security advice to help the people. So the situation is not good. Yes, recent, during the invasion, uh, the Muslim Authority, they uh, uh, arrested uh, some uh, people. Uh, maybe they are, they are close to be from the fighters. or I don't know exactly if they are really fighters or not, but uh, they are come from area. Uh, they consider like they are fighters or they support the resistance engineer refugee camp and the Muslim Authority arrested them. The Muslim Authority, they said, because there is uh, like another... A problem, but we believe it's come uh, according to their agreement with the with the, uh, the incubation. Unfortunately, we hope. In fact, uh, for me, as a Mustafa, as a person here, I hope uh, really to stop this coordination and this relationship between the Palestinian Authority and Israel. We need from those uh, from any uh, Palestinian to support the Palestinian right and to stand with the Palestinian right by. Any, anyway, and that's important, especially in this time. We are living very sensitive uh, uh, time where, uh, where is the, uh, the Israel army, this state, it's now, it's really crazy with their settlers. They are occupied the, the uh, leadership and being in the government and they can, they make their uh, aggressive action against the Palestinian. And they, that, they now, they had like a, a deep problem, interior problem uh, between the right and the left in Israel. So we need from all the Palestinians to stand with each other. Uh, we hope for the Palestinian Authority and uh, from the president, from the leader to return to their people, to their priority, to focus for the Palestinian priorities, to focus for the Palestinian dreams and hopes and to achieve it because we have rights and all of us fight to get this right for liberation, for independence and for freedom. And the freedom, it's a freedom. It's not just in the incubation, freedom for expression, to talk, uh, to, to share my, our uh, political opinion too. It's not just in the incubation. Thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. Um, is, there, is there anyone else who wants to ask a quick question? We are running out of time. So if there's anyone, that's fine. Otherwise, uh, we are going to soon end the meeting. I just want to quickly say that uh, do please, uh, again, look at the email that you'll get from Zoe, because that has resources that all of us can use uh, in our work here in India. Uh, as I said earlier, 
um, Zionism and Hindutva have a lot in common. They share a lot. And the current government uh, in India, um, Narendra Modi's government uh, and the RSS, the uh, the force that is behind this government, um, have borrowed a lot from the Israeli playbook. So therefore, it's really important for us to kind of understand what's happening in Palestine and to extend our solidarity and support. And I do want to say to uh, to Mustafa and to Tobasi and to all of our friends and comrades uh, in Palestine, uh, in the Jenin refugee camp, at the Freedom Theater, that we are sending you lots and lots of love, solidarity, strength, but also, uh, you know, we get inspired uh, uh, by you uh, because the incredible spirit of the Palestinian people, as it is uh, symbolized and expressed uh, through the Freedom Theater, uh, is something that has been of incredible uh, importance to us uh, in our struggles um, in India. Uh, so thank you very, very much uh, for all the work that you do. And thank you very much for joining uh, uh, this solidarity meeting today. I also want to uh, thank Zoe, uh, without whom uh, really uh, the meeting today would not have happened. I also want to thank uh, Vikas Ravel and his team who have worked behind the scenes uh, to make this um, uh, experience as seamless uh, as possible. And a big thanks to all of you. Uh, I just want to also say that, that this meeting has been live streamed on the Leftward Books YouTube channel. So I would encourage all of you to, uh, to use your social media and to, and to tweet about it, or I don't know if it's called tweet anymore, uh, but whatever it is, tweet, Facebook, you know, um, 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 Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. Post about it, uh, share this clip, uh, uh, this meeting with your friends and comrades who were not able to join um, and spread the word and spread the revolution. Thank you very, very much, all of you.